On this channel, we've covered quite a few functional materials from filaments on the FDM side to various resins on the resin 3D printing side. I don't think it's any secret that I love functional 3D printing, whether it's fixing stuff around the house, customizing something, or just using it towards a project that I'm currently working on. With that being said, I do still love the really cool, colorful, pretty filaments and materials that have come out, and I do use them very, very often. From color changing and silky to wood filled and glittery, there are a massive amount of these materials that are already on the market and that are coming out. I feel like almost every single day there is a filament or material manufacturer showing off some new crazy looking material. And these are awesome for things like gifts or even your own personal projects. If you want to give it a little bit of extra pizzazz, these materials are great for that. And as of now, they've been available primarily in PLAs and PETGs, but we are starting to see even some ASAs and ABSs coming out in these different variants. One really unique thing about resin 3D printing is your ability to mix things together. I've seen quite a few people mix different pigments and dyes with their resin. I've seen them mix different glitters and even combining different resins to give yourself some very unique properties. And that's actually something that I really would like to explore more because it just seems really interesting being able to, again, sort of dial in the perfect resin for your specific application by maybe combining two very different resins together. And although you can you know, mix or concoct your own resin cocktail, if you will, uh, don't drink resin, <laughs> but uh, it, it would be really cool to see more of these unique resins become available just off the shelf where you also don't have to, you know, spend time mixing and finding the perfect ratio if that's not something you're interested in doing. Soraya Tech has really been on the forefront of creating different resins for MSLA or these LCD resin printers that many of us are using today. And we've covered quite a few of both their functional resins as well as my everyday driver which is their fast resin on this channel and i was really excited to see that they released a glow-in-the-dark craft resin so in today's video i've been playing a little bit around with this glow-in-the-dark craft resin we are going to do some printing we will talk a little bit about what this resin is how to print with it uh, what the kind of quality looks like of the prints I got with it, as well as how well it actually glows. I'm really excited to kind of take a break from the more technical things and just have fun playing around with this resin. I hope you guys are excited, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Massive thanks to Thanks for sponsoring today's video. With over 2 million index models in their database and growing regularly, Thanks finds the exact model that you're looking for. Thanks has some pretty unique features, like the ability to perform a geometric search or the recently added AR mode that I love. I'm a very visual person, and having the ability to place a 3D model in your space before actually printing it for reference can be quite useful. Also, it's a lot of fun and can make for some great photos. There are also great collaboration functionality baked right in, like the ability to create a private team for working on projects where you can keep track of things like different model versions as well as revisions. You also have the ability to follow a user's project, which is great for any that are actively being updated. Things has been developing new features for their site constantly, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this platform continue to expand. Links will be in the description so that you can find out more and check out things for yourself. Before we get into the resin settings on how to print with this resin, Soraya Tech does have a spreadsheet that has the mechanical properties, or at least some of the mechanical properties of this resin, which I will go ahead and overlay here. And if you want to take a look at it in further detail, I will also place links in the description down below so that way you can check it out and see if it is going to work for whatever your specific application is. As far as the printer goes, we are going to be using the Voxel Lab Proxima. This is the 8.9 inch. I guess the Proxima has a smaller version and they didn't just, they decided not to name it something different. So it's just the Proxima 8.9 inch, which is a 4K MSLA based resin 3D printer. And uh, Voxel Lab does have their own slicer, but I played around with it a little bit and it's quite bare bones. I will show you all of this stuff in a upcoming review on this actual printer. But for this video, I'm going to be using Chit2Box as the slicer for this printer. Looking at the recommended cure settings on the same document as those mechanical properties, 25 seconds seems to be recommended for the first five layers followed by two seconds for the remaining layers. So that is what we are going to use. This is specifically for monochrome printers. So if you have a standard LCD printer like the original Elegoo or the original Photon, you will want to use the Photon settings or something similar to that instead. It is great that unlike on FDM printers, if you print with glow-in-the-dark resin, it is abrasive and you at least have to swap out your nozzle. You don't have to do anything special with your resin 3D printer. So as long as you have an MSLA or LCD-based resin 3D printer, which again is 
pretty much what everybody is using nowadays, then you won't have to do anything special to print with this resin. It's kind of ironic with how many people I follow in the 3D printing space. I'm always seeing really cool models that I want to print out. And then when it comes time to test out a material or a printer, I draw a blank. And sometimes the most difficult aspect of reviewing or testing something is figuring out what the heck I actually want to print. Luckily, there are two models that were released by Chaos Cortec over the last couple of weeks that I had my eyes on and I really wanted to print out. So I started off with the Little Big Heads uh, Jason model that they had created and released over on Friday the 13th a couple of weeks ago. The file was a little bit larger than I wanted, especially because I plan on printing him solid. So I scaled him down, rotated him and added supports. Once ready to print, I filled up the vat with the Glow in the Dark Craft Resin. You should always shake up your resins well before pouring them in, but in the case of specialty resins, I really want to emphasize the importance of this. Once filled, I started the print and came back some time later to a finished print hanging from the bed. There was one support that for whatever reasoning didn't seem to hold on, but it didn't have any effect on the model itself. I used Creality's wash and cure station to throw the model in, run it through a wash cycle, then I removed the supports, which are really easy to remove. I am a huge fan of the default supports in Chichibox. I used uh, medium in this case. They work really well and they are super easy to remove. And then I followed that up using the exact same Creality Wash and Cure Station with the curing process. And I could already see the model glowing pretty heavily even with my lights on just being in that cure station. Once done, I went ahead and blasted it with these studio lights and then I took the print over into a dark room and was absolutely blown away just by how bright of a glow this resin has. I tried my best to pick up the glow and, and show it on camera, but it definitely does not do justice. This stuff glows crazy bright. And um, it's been quite some time since I've done a glow in the dark print with uh, something like PLA, which I used to do a fair amount of, but I don't remember PLA or the FDM glow in the dark filaments looking nearly as bright as this resin, which is super cool because again, if you are looking for something that needs to have as bright of a glow as possible, this does seem quite a bit brighter than the FDM counterparts that I've used previously. Super happy with the first print, I downloaded and sliced up a Starro model also from Chaos Cortec. This model is a bit bulkier, so I hollowed the model to save on resin, and I used these same medium supports that I'd used on the first model. Just like the Jason model, the Starro model turned out awesome, and I actually went ahead and shared a photo of it over on Twitter when my buddy Chris Russell, or Practical Printing as many of you may know him has, reached out and recommended that I pick up some Rub and Buff and see what that does to this model. Rub and Buff is basically this little tube uh, right here. It comes in little tube. There's a couple different colors and it's a wax metallic finish. And uh, you're supposed to take a little bit of this and you can sort of highlight accents or details. And I've seen people use different colors. This is ebony, which is what I used on the um, Starro model, but I also picked up antique gold. And I've seen people use this stuff to make 3D prints look sort of antique and give them these really unique um, sort of attributes. And so because the glow in the dark doesn't really show, at least with your eyes, you can't really see all the details as well because it's such a light color. I figured that adding some of this sort of to the accents based off of Chris's recommendation would be something that is super cool. The main thing I was told was that a little goes a long way and that could not be more accurate. I thought that I was pretty light with putting this stuff on the print, but I feel like I did way too much and at least on the front portion, think that I should have gone much lighter, but it still looks really awesome. And once I got the correct amount on the cloth that I used, it was able to accent and make all the details on the model on both the sides and the back pop. And because of the glow in the dark uh, resin, when you take it into the dark, it really gives some sort of depth and detail to the model. So I think this stuff looks really rad and I just clearly need to practice a bit more in my technique. So when I do some more resin printing and maybe even after this video, I will take some of the other models that I printed, apply some to it and see if I can't get sort of a better technique down. I was trying to think of a character that glows, which made me think of the game Fallout, which I played a long time ago with the radiated ghouls. MZ4250, which I have highlighted quite a few of his models and printed them in the past, did have a ghoul model, so I printed out a very small version of that. Based on your recommendations a few weeks ago when I kept talking about me needing to pick up a macro lens, a lot of you guys said, hey, why don't you look into just sort of these macro extension tubes, which are way less expensive than the few hundred dollar macro lenses I was looking at, and it will allow you to sort of get that macro effect. So I did pick them up and I did snap a couple of shots, which I will go ahead and overlay for you guys, but I still think that 
with this resin, it will be much easier to show when I go ahead and print with a darker resin. So thank you to all of you because I did take some random photos around the house with it and it is pretty awesome. And I'm very much looking forward to being able to magnify some of these miniatures to really show you the detail that these printers are able to capture. For the last print, I found an awesome articulated shark that I wanted to print out. I printed out a few articulated models in the past on my FDM printers, but I haven't really done anything on the resin printers. If I had a flex plate installed, I would have printed them out flat, but out of fear of damaging the model, I added a medium supports and I lifted them off of the build plate. Unfortunately, halfway through the print, the tail sort of broke away from the supports. And I think this is due to the fact that it is an articulated model. And so there's just so many moving points that the pull from the FEP, even if I had it leveled, you know, as good as I could get it, was just still a little bit too much for the supports to be able to hold on to. So I ended up rotating the shark in a different way to try to minimize that sort of surface peel force. And then I did increase the supports from medium to large just to give it a hold. This was also a fully solid model, so there was some weight to it. So I think a combination of the, the weight and the articulation were really the um, sort of contributing factor to the tail breaking off. So once I reprinted it with the heavy supports and rotated it, the print turned out great. The Soriatek glow in the dark craft resin has been a ton of fun to play around with and I still got a little bit more in the bottle so I'm going to be figuring out ways to maybe implement it into a future project. I didn't actually want to use it all because I know there will be a time where something glow in the dark resin printed will be sick so I'm going to be leaving a little bit of it but uh, I was really happy that it is much like their other resins fairly low odor and I could really see it being useful for various props and even um, some cosplay stuff, but I really think that there could be some functional applications for this resin. With the glow in the dark, I kept thinking of printing out a fishing lure and the shark that I printed out, um, although this is huge, uh, my dad has been doing a ton of fishing in uh, up in the freshwater lake. And so I was thinking that potentially some kind of smaller version of this, but with obviously a couple hooks could be great. My only concern is because this isn't necessarily a tough resin that it could be a bit too brittle and I could really imagine a you know a fish clamping onto something like this and tearing it off but I'm wondering if taking something like this and then mixing it with maybe a 10 or 20 percent flexible resin would give it that added strength to be able to you know withstand the pull force of something like fishing so uh, that could be a pretty neat application for using something like this glow in the dark resin let me know in the comments down below what you would use the glow in the dark resin for and bonus points if you are able to think of some sort of functional applications that this could be good for and if you have any questions on this resin on how to print with it or anything about it specifically let me know in the comments down below and i will do my absolute best to answer as always, if I don't know the answer, I can reach out to Soraya Tech and see if they can get me those answers for you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below over to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.